Good morning. A uh, special welcome to any visitors we might have with us today, as, as well as our online visitors. We hope sometime soon you can join us in person. Um, for our, any uh, guests or visitors that we may have with us today, I'd like to have you fill out our visitor card. And if you'd like more information about the church, there's a visitor information table in the narthex or the back of the church. Uh, also, for our guests and visitors, there are words on, in the bulletin about Holy Communion. If you share in our beliefs, please join us in communion today. Um, for both members and visitors, please fill out the attendance card and place that in the offering box in the back of the church on your way out. A couple of uh, reminders here. One, next Sunday we're having our voters assembly meeting to uh, review the 21-22 uh, church budget. We'd like all of you to attend that meeting uh, just to help you have a better picture of our finances here at Christ Memorial. Also, we are collecting supplies for our uh, Vacation Bible School. Uh, this announcement is in the bulletin, but we're looking for uh, cardboard egg cartons, uh, the one dozen size. You can drop those off at Sue Early's office. And finally, on the 27th, we'll be having our annual church picnic, so uh, mark your calendars for that. There are other announcements in the happenings on the back of your bulletin, so if you would, just uh, review those. Uh, with that, if you would, please rise for our opening hymn. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, 
God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pause for a moment of personal, private prayer, reflection, and confession. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sakes for, forgives you all of your sins. As an ordained servant of Christ, I therefore forgive you your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now continue in worship by reading Psalm 130 responsibly by verse. Psalm 130 as found in the front of your hymnal, right after Psalm 129. If you get to Psalm 131, you've gone straight up too far. 128 is straight out. <laughs> Psalm 130, read responsibly by verse. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord. More than the watchman for the morning. More than the watchman for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity and the power of the divine majesty. Keep us steadfast in this faith and defend us from all adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 through 15, and can be found on page 3 of your pew Bible. That's Genesis 3, verses 8 through 15. And they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called out to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to me gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. She shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, starting with verse 13 and going through chapter 5, verse 1. And this can be found on page 966 of your pew Bible. Since we have the spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe and so we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart, Though our outer self is wasting away, and our inner, self is be, our inner self is being renewed day by day, for this light momentary, this light momentary affliction is pre preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. For we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand to honor the words of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the third chapter. Then he went home, and the crowd gathered again, so that they could not even eat. But when his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, He is out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, He is possessed by Beelzebub, and by the prince of demons he casts out the demons. And he called to them, or called them to him, and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods, unless he first binds the strong man. Then, indeed, he may plunder his house. Truly, I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the children of man, and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemies, uh, blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they were saying, he has an unclean spirit. And his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. 
And a crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. He answered them, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking around at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. This is the gospel of the Lord. We now profess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we continue in worship with hymn 645, Built on the Rock.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A little glimpse behind the curtain of the sermon preparation process. Uh, Prior to coming here to Christ Memorial, um, I've always served at churches that do topical sermon series versus the lectionary. Topical sermon series meaning like the pastors and the staff would get together and say, hey, let's do a sermon series on something like like science or, or marriage or pick a book of the Bible and go through that. And you would pick the scripture based on the topic the sermon was on for that day. The lectionary, which is what we do here at Christ Memorial, is a little different, um, is that the, the church body, the synod, um, really kind of picks the readings, and it goes through, and it, the idea is that you basically, over the course of three years, hear the majority of the Bible, or all the main parts of the Bible. Uh, the gospel reading, for instance, uh, since it's three years, it rotates for the books, uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, with the, the gospel of John kind of interspersed in there. So each of those gospels gets one year. Uh, But because of that, sometimes the readings don't necessarily line up with each other. And so when I look at all the readings, I I like to find a common thread. But today was a difficult one because we have three very different readings. We have Genesis 3, the repercussions, I guess you could say, of the first sin. Uh, then you have, the, you have the Apostle Paul talking about our outer self and our inner self and, and all that's going on. And then the gospel reading is Jesus being accused of, of basically being of the devil. And so like, how do you find this common thread between these three readings? And I, I did find one. However, it's going to require today's sermon to be a little different. In some way, I, I'm going to be preaching backwards. I'll explain more in a minute, but before I do, if you could please join me in prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for this chance that we get to come together, whether here in person or online. Uh, We thank you. Uh, I thank you, Lord, for the chance to share your message, and I pray that it is your message. I trust in you, Lord, and I pray that you will speak, that your Holy Spirit will be at work. I submit myself to you, and I pray that everybody else will be willing to do the same. We pray all these things through your Son, Jesus, in his name. Amen. And again, I want to say a special welcome to those of you joining online. It is nice for you to to join us throughout the message today. If you're watching just the message portion, I'll reference some of our lectionary readings. I'll try and reference what those readings are so that you can follow along. If you've ever baked a pie or maybe just watched Great British Baking Show, which is my jam, um, you know what it means to blind bake the crust. Uh, Basically, it's when you make the crust of the pie and then you put like a weight in there and you put it in the oven so that it it gets kind of halfway baked so that when you put the the, the wet ingredients in, the filling, you don't get what's called a soggy bottom. And trust me, you don't want a soggy bottom when it comes to making a pie or preaching a sermon. So when you kind of partially bake that, what's happening is you're you're helping that crust to withstand the things you're going to put inside of it. Now, let me explain. The reason that I bring this up, typically when I preach, I put the gospel at the end, right? You want to end with good news. You want to end with that proclamation of love and hope. That's how I typically end my sermons. But today, I want to start off with the gospel because really that gospel is going to serve as the crust, as the container by which the whole thing is held, You'll see as we kind of go along here. So really, our law is going to come from, in some sense, the gospel. Okay, I'm going to stop talking about preaching and actually start preaching. Um, So our gospel. Our gospel comes from our epistle reading, from that that middle reading about the Apostle Paul. If you're watching online and you didn't get to catch the earlier part of the service, it's 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Um, We're going to pick it up at verse 16. I'm going to read it again. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. For we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Essentially what that is saying is that this world, 
that we experience with its pain, with its sorrow, that the brokenness brought about by sin, it's not the end. We know that we have life eternal waiting for us in paradise. We know that through Jesus Christ, through, uh, it says, not made by hands, through the work of God, we have forgiveness. The struggles that we experience, the frustration, the pain, and the mourning, it's not the end. It's not finite. There will be a time beyond this that we get to celebrate in paradise with heaven through nothing that we do, but through what God has done for us. We know this because in our Old Testament reading, as we, we look back at God's reaction to the very first sin, yes, he speaks to the serpent and issues a curse. Yes, he points out the repercussions of sin to Adam and Eve. That's actually not part of our reading. What he tells them is essentially, your life on this world, yeah, it's going to be tough now. Because you broke the one rule that I gave you, don't eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil now, guess what? You're going to be aware of good and, yes, evil. That means that as you toil, as you dig, as you work the earth, it's going to be difficult for you. That means there'll be pain in childbirth. That means there'll be constant conflict and tension between man and woman. Living in this world will be difficult. But then he speaks to the serpent, really beforehand, he speaks to the serpent and he curses the serpent. He says, you're going to wriggle on the ground for all the days of your life. And then right at the end of our reading, he says something interesting. I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. That is widely accepted as the first promise of a Messiah. The world literally just broke. It just happened. And in God's immediate reaction to the first sin, he offers salvation. He says, yeah, you guys just broke it, but guess what? I'm going to fix it. And so we know that this world that we experience with its brokenness, with the repercussions to sin, that is not the end of our story. That we get a paradise waiting for us, right? So as you go through the difficulties of this life, you can have hope knowing that there is better yet to come. A savior has come and fixed this broken world. Whatever you're going through, whatever difficulty, whatever stress, whatever mourning, whatever pain, whatever frustration, whatever effects of this broken world, it will fade away when you get to bask in paradise with God Almighty. Now, I could end the sermon there. That would be how I would normally put it, the end of the sermon, because you want to end with good news. It's a powerful statement of paradise yet to come. It's a powerful statement of the hope that we have as Christians through not our work, but the work and sacrifice of God. But there's something to it that that I've always felt is difficult because you can tell somebody, yeah, the the pain you're going through, um, it's gonna one day fade away and you'll get to go to heaven. Yeah, but I'm still in this pain right now. I'm still dealing with this right now. It'd be like telling like a kid on, on a road trip, right? Like, hey, buddy, I know you're car sick right now, but in like eight hours, we're going to be able to get out of the car and it, you're, everything's going to be better then. And the kid's going, yeah, but right now my insides feel like they want to be my outsides. So I don't, that doesn't help me right now. It's like for me just over this weekend, um, we had a lot of rain here in Houston, like a lot of rain here in Houston. And I uh, found out that I, yes, I have French drains in my yard, but many of them were clogged. And so my back porch was covered by about two inches of water or so. And so I called a company that takes care of that. And like, if if I had called them and said, hey, um, my back porch is flooded, I need you guys to come look at this. And they said, listen, buddy, I know the frustrations of this world are a lot, but one day you'll get to be in heaven and we're gonna pray for you. I'd be like, thanks but my porch is still flooded. Can you help me with that? See, too often in the church or as Christians, when somebody has a problem, when somebody has something they're going through, we offer the gospel in love, right? But to somebody who's going through a difficult time, that can seem like an empty platitude. It can seem like, yeah, okay, that's all well and good, but how does that help me right 
now. In the church, yes, it's great to talk about things of the Spirit, but we also need to realize that we're still in this world. I used to work at a church. There was a guy who, uh, when he would go out to a meal, he had these Bible tracts that looked like money. And instead of a tip, he would leave this Bible tract. And he would say, the gospel's better than any money. And I said, yeah, that's true, but they still need to make rent. And so if I was with him, I'd always leave double tip because we still have needs. Yes, the gospel is powerful. The gospel is something that we should be telling everybody about, but we also have a responsibility as we live in this world to recognize that there are earthly needs too, that we can care for, that we can be there, that we can listen to. This is also seen in our gospel. Uh, Maybe you missed it because it's right at the beginning. But Jesus and his disciples are gathered together and there are all these crowds around them, including the scribes and the Pharisees. They're gonna be throwing all sorts of terrible things at him. And it says, there were so many people they couldn't even eat. So here's Jesus and his disciples and they're just straight up hungry. Like, man, I haven't eaten. I I, I skipped lunch because I was healing some people and and now I I just want to sit down for a meal and people are coming to him with legitimate things, right? They're they're coming with heavenly concerns and he's like, I just want to eat. See, sometimes there are people in our lives who are hungry, who are dealing with earthly issues, who are dealing with with mourning, who are dealing with frustration, with pain, who who have earthly needs, and we come to them with spiritual things. I'm a Christian, so uh, let me tell you about the gospel of Jesus. And that's great. That is so good. Thank you for that. But also, we have a chance and an opportunity to care for our community. We have a responsibility to care for our family. And I say family intentionally because you noticed at the end of our gospel reading, when Jesus is, you know, his mothers and brothers come to rescue him from this, this difficult situation, he says, who are my mothers and my brothers? Look around. The people who follow the will of God are my mothers and my brothers. And you're thinking now, okay, so he's talking about Christians, right? Well, it doesn't say follow the will of God perfectly. It doesn't say people who are only following the will of God. It's people who follow the will of God. And I've got news for you. The will of God is kindness. The will of God is loving your neighbor. The will of God is showing compassion, is putting somebody before you. And most people do that. And so in some sense, when it goes ahead and we see Jesus talking about what is the one law in Mark chapter 12, he says, love God, yes, but then love your neighbor. That's our responsibility. That is the calling that we have As Christians, it it all comes back to the law, right? It comes back to what Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. And to love your neighbor means making sure that their needs are met. Sometimes um, it can mean being reminded of the fact that this world is going to fade away. Sometimes it is proclaiming the gospel, right? We all know people who need to hear the gospel, who need to hear that message of hope. But make sure that you're not just giving that, that you're also recognizing, hey, they need somebody to talk to. They need somebody who will listen and not speak over them. They need somebody who can be just a shoulder to cry on in this moment. There are people who are just straight up hungry. And it's all well and good to proclaim the gospel. I'm not saying that that is not what we should be doing, but we also have a responsibility to care for the people in our lives, to care for the community. And so the challenge that we have is to recognize that there are those who are experiencing pain and sorrow, who have needs, who have concerns in this world, who have things that keep them awake at night, whether it be a relationship that's falling apart or bills that keep stacking up or a job thing that's coming and they're just so nervous about it or this or that. or There's so many things that we experience because of the brokenness of this world and they're gonna be in your life. And we have an opportunity to proclaim hope, yes, to proclaim love that will never fade away, yes, To say, hey, this frustration that you're in now will one day fade away. I promise, because God has promised us life everlasting. It was all the way back in Genesis chapter 3, a promise of a Messiah. 
We can say those things. We can say, listen, I know that you're going through a dark time, but one day the dawn will come and the sun will rise and the darkness of this world will fade away. Yes, we can proclaim that. But sometimes the person just needs a flashlight. Sometimes the person just needs something to deal with it in that moment. And we can be there for that too. We can be a shoulder to cry on. We can be a listening ear. We can be there to, whether it be you provide your time, talents, treasure, you just are there for somebody. Genuinely, earnestly, intentionally. As a church, as the church, as God's people in this world, it is a challenge. But it's a challenge that we can be up to. It's a challenge that we can respond to. It's a challenge that we know because we have the gospel, right, that holds all of this in. We know that this world will fade away. We know about the hope that we have. And so we can point other people to that, but we can also help them to navigate the pain of this world. And maybe that's you. Maybe you are the one navigating it right now. And I pray that the church can be the hands and feet of God. I pray that the church, the people of God can be there for you and to walk you through this difficult time. It may seem backwards to hear your preacher talking about, yeah, 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 preach the gospel. Really focus on this too. It may seem completely like, what what is he talking? This isn't what we normally hear in church. But my prayer, my prayer is that God can work through those confusing things, can work through to the gospel first and then the law second, and then God can work through what is backwards, just like this sermon. Because God uses brokenness to proclaim hope, to deliver care, to provide for his people. Just as he's done for us, so may we do for others. Amen? Amen. Now, if you could please join me in prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you today and we ask that you would inspire us. See, far too often, Lord, we, we're quick to point to heavenly things when we, and we overlook earthly things. And I know that sounds strange, Lord, from our perspective, but you know what I'm talking about. You know the pain of this world. You know as people weep, as people mourn, as people suffer. You know as people look at the bills and they're concerned. Lord, help us to be there for them. Help us to provide for them so that you can provide for them that through that act of kindness, through that act of mercy, they may know what mercy truly is, the mercy that comes through Jesus Christ. Lord, as your son walked on this earth, he showed love and kindness to so many people. He dealt with their earthly needs, but always pointing to heaven as well. Lord, for everybody here in this room or watching online, I pray that that news, the gospel, the evangelion would break through in their hearts and in their minds, that we would have hope knowing that this world with its pain and its sorrow will fade away, but that you are also with us here in this world. Guide us on, Lord. Guide us through our struggles, but then also help us to guide others. As we have our own valleys of death that we've navigated, we can point others through theirs. Inspire us, Lord. And Lord, because this is a community with all sorts of different people coming from different places, uh, with different family and different backgrounds, I know that there are a lot of things that people are going through. And so, Lord, uh, we raise them up to you. We ask that you would be with them, uh, their needs physically, their needs emotionally, and yes, Lord, their needs spiritually. We ask that you are present with them, with us, and help us to be there for them. And Lord, because we live in this world, because there are so many things going on, it would be impossible for me to pray every request, every concern, everything that's going on in the lives of the people here. And yet, and yet, as you walked on this earth, you taught us a prayer that says it all. And so here now in this place, one voice, one family of believers, we pray to you, praying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. We're gonna now move into the time that normally we would pass the plates. We can't do that, as you hear me say pretty much every week. Uh, But this is a way not only for us to show our gratitude to God for the blessings that he has given us, but also for a way to help with earthly needs of people to, to propagate ministry, to make sure that people's needs 
are met to help in our community. Uh, so there are different ways you can give. You can either give online. There's information in your bulletin. You can text to give. There's also a box there in the back. Now would also be the time you can fill out that membership card. Uh, folks that are our members, go ahead and fill out a white one. If you're a guest, fill out a yellow one. And if you're a guest, uh, we also give you the opportunity to receive after the service. If you're a first-time guest, there are some black bags on the table right here against the wall. Uh, be sure to grab one of those. And I'd love to, to meet with you afterwards. Uh, those of you joining online, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to continue in worship now by singing the doxology. Uh, and then we're going to let you guys go because we're going to move into the sacrament of the altar, which can really only be enjoyed in person. I pray that uh, if you're watching locally, you're able to join us. If you're watching somewhere else, find a local church. Find a way to get involved beyond just Sunday morning. Thank you for joining. We continue now with the doxology. Please stand. <laughs> 